Hello and welcome to St. Luke's Anglican Church in Pembroke. We're glad you can join us as this service goes online, and we hope viral, on Sunday, March 14th, which is the fourth Sunday in this season of Lent. Uh, we're glad you can join us. It is a communion service, so we invite you to participate in the prayers and uh, to follow along in the hymns and so on. You'll find the words underneath the video itself. Uh, the first part of the service will be led by Deacon Janet, and I'll be uh, preaching, and then I'll lead the communion part of the service. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this season of Lent, and we thank you for your presence with us when we meet together, whether it's online or in person. Your presence is in our midst. We ask, Lord, that you would be glorified and that your people would be blessed. Lord, use this service for your purposes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we've got a great old hymn to open the service. Come thou fount of every blessing. Heart, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Let us pray sincerely this call it for purity. Almighty God, God to you all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires, desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our colic for Ash Wednesday throughout Lent. Please join. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Collect for Lent 4. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore, give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll have our first reading, led by Jim. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Numbers, three verses from uh, chapter 13, and then 10 verses from chapter 14. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a chief among them. And so Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the people of Israel. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And then all the congregation raised a loud cry and the people wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a leader and we will go back to Egypt. And then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, the land which we pass through to spy it out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land. They are just bread for us. Their protection is removed from them and the Lord is with us. So do not fear them. But then all the congregation said to stone them with stones but the glory of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting to all the people of Israel. Here ends the reading, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, starting at chapter six. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. After this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that it, a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are there? They are so many. Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the man sat down, about five thousand in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, 
as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The Gospel of Christ. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Lord, as you multiplied the loaves and fishes, so multiply these few words that you might be glorified and your people blessed. Do your work in transforming us, we pray, for the sake of Jesus and in his name. Amen. Amen. Matahari, intrepid, James Bond, Maxwell Smart. (laughs) People like spy stories. A lot of people do anyway, whether they're real or fiction, whether they're serious or comical. Uh, And we hear a spy story in today's Old Testament reading as we continue with the Israelites on their journey from slavery in Egypt through the desert and wilderness and eventually into the Promised Land. That's our Lenten sermon series. We're looking at some of the highlights and some of the lowlights of the journey that they went through. We can only touch on a few things in this season of Lent. But you'll remember perhaps that uh, not only did the Lord deliver them out of Egypt and through the Red Sea, but he was with them all the way. A pillar of fire by night, a pillar of cloud by day. And uh, how often we find, including in today's reading, the Israelites complaining because it wasn't an easy journey, because there were, there were problems, they were hungry, they were thirsty. And yet we've heard over and over again how the Lord provided for them. We heard how they met in battle and how the Lord brought them through by prayer. We heard all, last week about how the Lord gave the law, the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. And we reflected how that law really covers much of the first five books of the Bible, not only the Ten Commandments, but also some of the directions for how worship was to happen, how the the tabernacle was to be built, and how the country was to be established, the laws of the land, as well as the spiritual laws. God's glory came down on Mount Sinai and the Israelites were camped there for quite a while. And then at the beginning of the book of Numbers, we've jumped from the second book of the Bible now to the fourth book, we hear about how the Israelites begin to leave camp. There's a census and they're sent out. They have some more adventures and some more complaining, uh, including Aaron, Aaron, Moses' brother, and Miriam, his sister. And now at today's reading that Jim read so well for us, They're just below Canaan, which would become Israel, the promised land. They're still in the desert, part of the desert called Paran, uh, and uh, they hear the Lord's instruction. God tells Moses to send out spies, one for each of the 12 tribes of Israel, to check out the Holy Land and and how good it is and and, uh, also the defenses that they're going to to face. And so the spies go out and we we only heard a little bit of the story, but, in between the readings, we hear about how they were there, there 40 days wandering through the land, checking it out. And when they come back, they report that the land is good. They even bring back some of the fruit of the land, grapes and pomegranates and figs. Uh, but 10 of those 12 spies bring back a negative report. They say that the, the people in the land are too big, the defenses are too strong, we'll never be able to take it. While two of the spies trusting in God, confident in God, that's Caleb and Joshua say, no, we can do it. Um, And so we hear, for example, in uh, chapter 13, verse 28, uh, this is what the, the 10 spies say, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. And then in verse 31, uh, uh, they say, we're not able to go up against the people. They're stronger than we are. But then we heard Caleb say in today's reading and Joshua, 
in uh, chapter 14 in verses 8 and 9, the Lord will bring us into the land, this land and will give it to us. A land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land. Their protection is removed from them, he said, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. And we hear in that reading that this report, two different views of what can happen that the spies bring back. Most of the people believe the ten. They, come, they wail and moan and they, and they say, why did God bring us here? Let's go back to Egypt. They're complaining again. They're not trusting God again. And they're not willing to go forward, despite what Joshua and Caleb have said. Of course, Moses and Aaron, they're, they're devastated by this. They were hoping that uh, the people would respond with faith, but they don't. And of course, the Lord is angry. If we read on in chapter 14, the Lord is angry and, and uh, Moses intercedes. And I encourage you to read just after this section, Moses' prayer in chapter 14 from verses uh, 13 to 19 about praying and asking forgiveness for his people. It's very instructive. And so God says, uh, well, I'm, not, I'm gonna forgive them, but I'm not gonna allow this generation to inherit and uh, enter the promised land. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Because the people in uh, the reading we had, chapter 14, uh, verses, verse three, they say, our wives and our little ones will become a prey. They were worried that their kids weren't, were gonna be killed. But in fact, what happens is it's their kids who inherit the promised land and they don't, except for Joshua and Caleb. Well, what can we learn from this story? There's so much, of course, and again, we're rem reminding folks that um, what we're hearing about is not only history of the Israelites, but also instructive for our life as Christians, and the whole Old Testament points toward Jesus' ministry and things we can learn uh, as his people, the church. Well, of course, one of the things that's obvious and that I just wanna remind us of is that the Lord is inviting us to a promised land. You know, of course, the eternal uh, presence, the glory of heaven, to be with him forever in the new heaven and the new earth that's coming, that's described in Revelation 21, where there's no more tears, no more sorrow, uh, no more pain or suffering, and the Lord is in their midst. It's a restoration. And uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 4 says that God wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to be with him. That's why Jesus came. He wanted his people to be restored to him and to enjoy the blessings that he's, uh, untold, unimaginable blessings that he has in store for us. The scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has even imagined what God has in store for those who love him. So God wants to bless us and bring him to his kingdom and to begin to taste it even now because eternal life begins in this world. When we invite Jesus into our heart, then we are in him and he in us, and we have a relationship. And yes, there's gonna be problems, we'll talk about that in just a second, but to know his presence, to have his hope, his peace. I don't know what people do in this world without God, but to know him and to know the delight of being his child, nothing could be better. The Lord wants to bless us. But as we just said, just as there were for the Israelites, so there are for us. There will be obstacles, there will be battles, and too big for us. You know, they described the, the, uh, the people of Canaan as giants, right? They're big guys, and their defenses are too big. And as we talked about a couple of weeks ago in the battle with the Amalekites, it, it, the devil and his minions, they are too big for us, but they're not too big for God. And did you notice how they question in verse three, why is the Lord bringing us into this land? What is God doing? Have you ever said that? Sometimes we might be tempted to think it when we see what the state of the world or when we go through trials and we wonder, is God still with us or not? And yet, we need to remember, friends, we need to get this in our head, that becoming Christians does not uh, mean that we are prevented from having trials or troubles or battles. In fact, we will get, in some cases, extra battles and trials than we, just by following Christ. Look at Paul's life, for example. Look at Jesus himself. It's the story of all God's people through the Bible and through history and to this day. Jesus said, in the world, you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. And so we're invited once again to trust in God and not ourselves, to trust his promise, to trust his presence, to live by faith, as the scripture says, and not by sight, to remember that one person plus God is a majority. Even if the whole world seems against us, even if the situation seems hopeless, God makes a way where there seems to be no way, like he did in the gospel today, taking five loaves and two fish and feeding 5,000. The little that we bring doesn't seem much, but God can multiply and make much. He's a God of miracles, folks, and he's bigger than anything we face. We need to keep our focus on him and our trust in him. And I just have to share this. I just heard this story today. A grandmother telling me about her four-year-old grandson who came home uh, and had a, a tummy trouble. He was had a sore belly and was crying and, and uh, grandma prayed with him. And then he, she heard later that day from uh, the mother that uh, the little boy just before bed had, was crying a little bit. And mom's saying, how you doing? And he said, these are tears of joy, mom because Jesus healed my belly. <laughs> Friends, we need, the, we need the faith of little children, as Jesus said, that trust in our Heavenly Father that He cares for us, He's not abandoned us when the times are tough, and He's gonna lead us through. He's gonna lead us through. He's big enough, like the child trusts their parents uh, to handle any problem. And I think this scripture also reminds us not to participate in the fear or negativity that might surround us. If others are falling away, we sang last Sunday in church, um, though none go with me, still I will follow. May that be true for us. May we have such faith and hope that even if others fall away, even if others slip into negativity or fear, and man, there's a lot of fear and negativity these days, aren't there? Yet, not in judgment, we're not to stand in judgment of our, our fellow human beings, our brothers and sisters, but with our focus on the Lord, we can be a real light if we hang on to Jesus. You know, at our Bible study last week, a couple of people brought up the example of Corey Ten Boom. You may know her story. A woman who, in hiding Jewish people in the Second World War, was eventually, she and her family, caught and imprisoned. The rest of her family was, were, died in prison camp. She eventually uh, came out again at the end of the war. Uh, had horrible experience, experiences, and yet prayed, and, and quoted scripture, and looked after the people in their, their cabin. She held on to her faith, and uh, was a light in a very dark place. How we speak about situations, the attitudes we have are important. We can be a light and a help, or we can contribute to the darkness. Don't be sucked in like the, like the ten spies were, and like the people uh, who, who listened to them, to be pulled down by fear or negativity. Last thing I just want to share with us is by having that trust in the Lord is to obey in action, to follow where the Lord leads, where he calls, he equips. He doesn't usually call us to do easy things. Sometimes it might be easy, but most of the time he calls us to do hard things, that we need to rely on him and his strength, even to love. We need help. <laughs> I need help, you know, in order to love God with all my heart, to love my neighbor as myself. I can't do that. I need God's help and his Holy Spirit. But he helps us. He's built it so that we need to rely on him and his help and, and help from one another. One little warning, though, as we would put our faith in action by obedience, by following where he leads, I want to remind us that we, it might, we might be tempted to misuse this story. We might be tempted to think, as often our culture says, which blows me away, <laughs> it's that it's so crazy, but it's not that we can do whatever we want with God's help, right? Oh, yeah, just uh, whatever I want, I can do. I can do anything. That's not what we're being taught here. We, but we can do anything that God wants. That's the difference, right? It's not so that we can be selfish or we can build our own empires. I can do anything. No, it's we can do anything that God wants by his help. And that's important because later in the story, if you read on in chapter 14, 
when the Israelites do hear from God and through Moses they hear what God said and how they weren't going to be able to go into the promised land and they hear God's disappointment in them, then they say, okay then, we'll go and take the land. And of course now they go without God's help and it's a mess. <laughs> so I'm not advocating just, oh, think positively and you can do anything. I'm advocating seek the Lord's will and what he asks us to do, he'll enable us to do and it'll be for the best. The Lord has a good plan for us. He wants to bless us. The journey to get there won't always be easy, but we can trust in him with childlike faith. He will lead us through. He will give us the victory. The question for us is, will we trust? Will we obey? As Caleb and Joshua said, do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land. The Lord is with us. Amen. Amen. And with those thoughts, let's affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have our prayers of the people, which will be followed by our hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Let's all pray together. Father God, hear the prayer we offer, not for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may live courageously. Lord God, this morning, we want to pray for all your people, dear Lord, in the churches of this upper Ottawa Valley. They too, like us here at St. Luke's, have been greatly restricted in our gatherings because of this pandemic. But we pray that however we manage to gather for worship this Sabbath day, however many people will be there, as best as we are able, let us lift the name of Jesus in worship and praise. Gladden our hearts, O Lord, as we look forward to full churches mm. and a glorious worship again. May it happen soon, dear Lord God. Mm. But with this pandemic in mind, we pray your blessing and comfort, your peace and healing be with all who have been infected by this virus, especially those who have lost loved ones, and those who are in hospital this very day. We thank you for all the medical men and women, 
doctors, nurses, paramedics who are still on the front lines of battling this virus even as we gather here today. O oh Lord, be their strength and protection, dear Savior. And Father, we want to pray for our federal and provincial governments, for the Prime Minister and provincial premiers. May they act with compassion and wisdom, doing what's right, putting political objectives aside. And we pray for an efficient and speedy rollout of the vaccines. We pray this morning for our pastor here at St. Luke's and deacons Jane, Janet, and David, for Julie who runs everybody in from the office, our parish council for their service to all of us during difficult times. Richly bless each one, dear Lord. They are loved and appreciated greatly. And for all our Annick brothers and sisters across this Canada of ours, in spite of all our struggles with this pandemic, may we all continue to bask in the love and the joy of our Lord and Savior, in whose name we lift this prayer this morning. And Lord, we want to remember the folks on our parish list this, this uh, Sabbath day, may your peace be with Kathy McNair, Lorna and Edgar Marquardt, Vicki McCauley, Iris McLaren. Meet them at their point of need, dear Lord. And all those on our prayer list, a great number once again, Lord, you know each one, you know each need. Yes. Pour out your healing and your grace and your peace upon them all, we pray. May all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
faith turns to him. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks, thanks, thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful cleanse their faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we gather together all our prayers and praises. As we prepare, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We know that some of us will be able to join together in person and have communion in the church this Sunday and in, or in the Sundays ahead, but we know that others of us may not be able to do that. I uh, want to remind you, by the way, that if you would like to arrange a private communion uh, with me, that can be done. If you're not able to be in group yet, in a group yet, uh, just contact the church. But for those who can't join us, we still know that wherever we may be, the Lord is there. And he longs to commune with us, even as we meet with him. And so there's this prayer for spiritual communion. You can say it along with me if you'd like to. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying and rising again for me. 
I believe you are truly present with me now. I love you above all things, and I desire to abide in you. Though I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I invite you to dwell spiritually in my heart. I bind myself to you, together with all your faithful people, and I embrace you with all my being. Thank you that nothing can separate me from your love. Amen. Amen. Nothing can separate us from his love. No wonder we say, Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to him and blessing to us. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. In whatever trials we may be going through, whatever path we may be on, may the Lord lead us. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon us this day, this season of Lent, and always. Amen. Amen. Well, we do thank you for joining us for worship today and everyone who's assisted in the service we're very grateful and all those who contribute to the church by your prayers and offerings and, and help in any way we we are so grateful we continue to uh, be doing various programs and ministries online or in person you can check out our website or contact the church if you need anything or any help just want to highlight that pretty soon we'll be coming up to holy week in easter march 28th is Palm Sunday. So of course we'll be having our Palm Sunday services and we will be having palms this year, Lord willing. Uh, we also intend by God's grace to have um, in-person services through the week, Monday to Wednesday at 6.30 of that week, uh, 6.30 in the evening. Uh, we'll be having services of meditation and prayer and Deacon Jane will be doing a mini sermon series those three nights uh, as we've been going through the, the uh, Israelites journey we're going to look at the Old Testament sacrifices and Jane's going to show how they connect and point to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Then on Monday, Thursday, again, we'll have our Monday, Thursday service at 6.30 and Good Friday service at 3 o'clock. Now, you don't have to sign up for the Monday to Wednesday services, but we would encourage you, if you would, if you're able to come in person, want to come in person, that you'd sign up for the uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. So we know the numbers. There's a possibility we may have to have a second service, for example, on Good Friday, if, if uh, the, the numbers warrant it in order to keep to the COVID guidelines. So we will be having some extra um, online services as well during Holy Week. On Easter Sunday, we'll follow our usual schedule. That's April 4th of eight, family service 9.30 and 11, but we will also be having a sunrise service uh, starts in the parking lot at 6.30 a.m. on Easter Sunday. Unfortunately, we won't be able to have our breakfast together, but we will have great fellowship in the Lord. I also want to highlight that after Easter, April 14th, the Wednesday night, we'll be starting an online a Zoom um, Alpha course, a wonderful program. If you've never heard of Alpha, boy, please join us. It's, and even if you have, we invite you to join us. We'll give you more information as we get closer. But if you're interested, if you've been on Alpha before, and you're interested in being on the team, we're having a meeting this Tuesday, March 16th at 6.30 p.m. at the church. Now, um, those who are gonna actually be helping with the course itself will need to be willing and able to be online, but we also will need people praying at home. So uh, uh, let us know if you'd like to help with that. And uh, you'll hear more about this because there'll be a newsletter coming out soon for Easter. Well, let's uh, join in singing our closing hymn, a wonderful hymn of God's protection and, pro and promise, This Is My Father's Word.
Now let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.